Hello, everyone. Welcome back to today's podcast. My name is Brittany Simon. In today's podcast, we're going to discuss if adult friendships are overrated. I got a question from one of you, and I'm looking forward to answering it. Before I do, I'm drinking ginger with honey. Very simple, very good, very recommend. So the question I got on stream the other day, really good question. I'm so glad you asked, and I'm excited to go through it with you today. I'm very excited to also hear your opinions. I'm in my mid-30s. I don't know how, how old you are, but friendship is something that we talk about so much on the internet. We talk about it so much. There's video essay after video essay after video essay. I mean, we've watched a few of them on the stream. So it's definitely a topic that's been discussed just almost to death, really. So what could I possibly say today that could add to that conversation? Well, here's hoping I add something to it in regards to it being overrated. And I think that's a conversation that I haven't really heard yet. So let's let's go through the question and then we'll kind of have the conversation. So the question is, I would love to see or hear about how friendships are overrated. I've never been chosen by friends and I'm not a friendship person. I consider my husband my best friend. However, sometimes I feel bad because I feel it is not normal and it gives me anxiety the fact that I don't have friends. Okay, so overrated is the word that stood out to me. I don't know about you, but I don't think friendships could ever be overrated if they're genuine connections. I think socializing is overrated just to socialize for socializing sake. I think having friends just to say you have friends is overrated. I think forming bad, shallow relationships just to make sure you check something off a list is overrated. I think friend groups that meet every weekend for brunch is sort of an overrated concept unless you're really um, lucky enough, maybe even privileged enough to live in the same town as your friends. I think there's so much to be said about adult friendships that I think people keep missing in regards to being overrated because we forget that, yes, there's a loneliness epidemic and yes, there's a relationship uh, issue happening with not only ourselves, but with the, the people in our lives. But I think it comes from this idea of feeling a pressure to have friends. So this person in particular says, I consider my husband my best friend. In some bubbles, that's a huge red flag, right? Like, oh my gosh, you have no friends. It's just your partner. Oh my gosh. But then... If you ask yourself, like, who am I in the story? And you look at the way your life has formed. I don't necessarily think it's a red flag. I think what's the red flag is why it ended up being that way. So why did you get to the point where your husband was your basically your best and only friend? Now, friend is a very specific word that I think is very interesting because I have tons of friends, right? You guys know on stream, like, uh, when I was growing up, a friend is just somebody you knew, like a friend is somebody that you kind of went to class with or you hung out or they were at your parents' house or, you know, you just call everybody kind of your friend. And then you have close friends and family like friends and sister friends and you have different categories of friends. And then in my uh, 30s, you guys know that I created a video about like friendship tiers, basically. And inner circle is kind of like that family tier. You know, every friend I have doesn't need to hear about every problem I have. So if my friends ask me, like, how are things? I don't need to tell them all the negative things that are happening in my life from health concerns or financial issues my friends or family are having. Like, they don't need to know anyone's business when they talk, talk, talk to me. They're really just friends to socialize with and say, hi, how are you? Oh, my gosh, I really love that we have this one thing in common. So when we talk about, like, is adult friendship overrated, we're really asking, I think, is having shallow friendships overrated? And yeah, I think they are. Now, I love a shallow friendship. I love a casual friendship. I love a friendship completely built off the fact that we love each other's Instagram posts. Or I love a friendship, you know, purely created on the fact that we both love the same artist. Like, I love a connection with people that requires, like, the least amount of work, basically. Like, when I hear this band song, I send it to the friend I know loves the band. And, like, that's our whole friendship. Like, I love that. But those aren't the people that I go to when things go rough. I, those aren't the people I call at 2 a.m. Those aren't the people that I necessarily talk to about anything other than music. And I think that's so valid. Is it overrated? I don't know. It's up to you. But I'm never going to say a real connection with another human being is ever overrated. Like what a, what a wonderful, what a, what a blessing, right? To have a connection with somebody. Now, I think what's important is that you, if you end up being the person whose best friend is your partner, that you sort of have a whole life outside of your partner as well. Because I think the concern would be is if your partner was your best friend and your whole life and your hobby and your religion and your, like, it's like, what do you do for you? Because you exist outside of your partner. You exist outside of your family. It's like the same thing with people that are like, oh, I'm all about my family. I sacrifice everything for my family to the detriment of yourself, like to the expense of, at the expense of yourself, because that can't be healthy, right? 
So when I think about strong friendships, I think about friendships that respect boundaries, let them grow as individuals, are excited for their changes and accept that like, you know, sometimes you go in different directions. I think ultimately friendship is about having people at your side who like you as a person. Like friendship is saying, I like you so much as a person, I'm going to go out of my way to sort of express that to you. Sometimes we think family is just like the people we're forced to be in connection with, which we know is not true anymore. But friends are people that have no obligation towards you. So when they choose to do that, it feels like they're like you as a person. Now, as we've seen online, especially with especially YouTube relationships, we've seen that people build friendships off a misunderstanding of a person. So now I'm friends with you because of the version of you in my head and not the version that you really are. And so when I get to know you more, it's like shocking to me. That happens, right? And it happens for a lot of reasons. And this is just a part of the growing and moving past each other and moving with each other, or moving away from each other. This is the process of friendship that a lot of people think is overrated and too exhausting, especially as we get into our elderly years and we get into all of the complications of ho house ownership and retirement and grandkids or no kids or, you know, wherever you're living in the world. That's a lot of stress to put on yourself with friendship. Now, keep in mind, we're also living at a very unique time in history where People are moving. We're not growing up in the same neighborhoods we were raised in with the same people watching everyone grow old. We're moving a lot. And so the idea of friendship has got to adapt to those changes. We've got to adapt. You know, my parents used to say all the time, like, your friends are never as important as your family because your friends leave you. And I think what they need to say is your friends have got to prioritize their lives over you. But so do you, so do, so do your family. So does your family. Like all of my siblings and I, we live apart from each other. We do our best to stay in touch, but we all have interesting careers, places, you know, family or relationships that take us away from each other. We have different, just aesthetic preferences. We have different desires in terms of where we want to live in the world. So it takes an extra effort for all of us to stay in touch, which yes, is effort. You have to put effort into it. Now, the effort is dependent on what's reasonable. Some of my brothers I talk to every six months or 12 months. Some of my brothers I talk to like once a week. Some of my brothers I talk to multiple times a week. It depends on the person, our relationship, how close we are, how much we have in common, and what's reasonable within our work schedules. So for some of my more religious brothers, I might talk to them a little bit less. Or some of my brothers that are like, we don't have much in common. I might talk to them less and maybe just on their birthdays. It's really just about what's reasonable. And then in terms of my besties, like my best friends, my very close friends, my, well, I could talk to them anytime I think of them, right? I can just send them a text. Hey, saw this video, thought of you. And that for us is like a building connection. It's saying, hey, how are you? How's the weather in your area? It's small talk, but it's talk that's making a reminder. It's not just because I'm bored and I don't know who to text, so I chose you. It's because I thought of you. Something came to my mind. Oh, so-and-so really loves this food. And I thought of them. Like I had a friend send me like, um, like a religious meme the other day. And I was like, oh yeah, like that's nice. Cause like I use, I grew up religious and like, that's funny. And like, I love a good Catholic like joke. And so that's kind of a connection of like, oh, they thought of me. That's so nice. And so even the friendships that are quote, unquote, low maintenance or that are a little bit more casual, like they do take an effort. But I think what's overrated is having friends just to have them. Who needs anything just to have it, whether it's a boyfriend, a friend, a dog, like don't just get it to get it. Have it because you're having a real connection. I mean, something I really don't like in people personally is when they adopt an animal just to have one. Like, I hope you're connecting to that animal and you're realizing like it's a whole life and it deserves like dignity and respect. Like, I feel like when Indiana picked me, my cat, when she came into my life, she's been with me now over a decade. Like, we are bonded. I moved her to Europe. Like, I'm not going to give up my cat to move to Europe. You know, like if we if we couldn't bring Indiana to Europe, we weren't moving to Europe. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, my life is about this cat. That's like a very significant Actually, I would argue my cat is more important than my friends because I would move to Europe if my friends couldn't come with me, but I wouldn't move to Europe if my cat couldn't come with me. <laughs> so in terms of priority, like my animal takes pr precedent over my friends. And I think that that's just because of my obligation to her. Like I am her caretaker. She has chosen me to take care of her. 
and I, you know, I, I love her. And so I will take care of her. I, pr- I will prioritize her even over my own wants. Like I prioritize my cat. So it's one of those things where I think people misunderstand what a friend is, aren't connecting with the real consciousness that is that friend. And in some ways we like objectify friendship. So when people judge you or you're scared of missing out because your like husband is your best friend, I think the thing you should be worried about is that you are revolving your life around him instead of both of you revol- revolving your life around the things that you have shared in common, but also like your consciousness, like yourself. So I think when I read this message, I love the word like overrated because there is in the same way that, you know, uh, following every fashion trend is overrated. Having friends just to have friends is overrated. But with this loneliness epidemic, I can see people's concern with feeling like, okay, but what do I do then? Why do I feel so alone? It's the relationship you're having with yourself. Look at the last two podcasts I made, right? I'm trying to get people to understand you shouldn't be feeling this unless something is off. And if something is off, it has to be with you. Because the truth is, is that you can feel secure in yourself. You can feel like you have a whole life with yourself. Now we are social creatures. And to some extent, that makes a lot of sense, right? So if my partner didn't exist, if God forbid they passed away or something, I would probably move to California where my sister is because that would make most sense. I have a remote job. I can move anywhere I want. She has the most stable job. She has a stable living. She has a stable apartment, which means that if I was to move my life near a friend who had stable living, I'd probably move it to the closest person I feel that I would want to see the most often in a way that, you know wouldn't feel like I'm uprooting my life every six months because they move all the time. Like my farm brother, I feel like sometimes he uproots his life way too often to like live next to him. But more than that, he's very religious. And as much as I love him, the kids and everything, I don't want to live where he lives. He lives like in a pretty conservative state. That's not interesting to me. So as much as I'd crave socialization, I don't know if I'd crave it enough to move to a conservative state at this point in my life, right? So I have to take into consideration my own needs and desires with my personality type and my job and which friend or sibling would be the most reasonable to move next to in terms of lifestyle choice. And that would be my sister. Even though my other friends are great and I love them so much, moving where they are, interrupting their flow, their life, their friends, their it wouldn't make sense. Versus my sister, like it makes sense to interrupt hers because it wouldn't be interrupting. I would fit much smoother into it. Plus my parents live nearby. So now I have my sister and my parents because they all live in California. Oh, and my two little brothers live about an hour from them. So that's even more perfect. Now, okay, so now I have three siblings, two parents. I have five social people that I can live next to. The taxes are going to be higher. My rent's going to be outrageous, but at least I get the perk of family. Now, if I was choosing a financial decision, maybe I'd move in the middle of, I don't know, Kentucky. I don't know how expensive Kentucky is, but let's say I moved to a, a cheaper part of the States, but I knew no one. Well, maybe having cheap rent wouldn't be worth it if I didn't know anybody, right? Now, if you're a person who genuinely has no one, like no friends, no family, no parents, no cousins, no nobody, you are in a very unique situation. And to be completely honest with you, I don't know how to speak to that experience. I don't know anybody in my life who's quite in that situation, though I could name a few who are kind of close to that situation, but at least they have a job they really love and their job kind of gives them an opportunity to live in a great place or they have like enough friends around the world that they don't feel too secluded or I have friends who at least have friends through work, so they don't feel, you know, I don't know what it's like to literally have no one. I'm not even sure what that would look like. I hear people say that, like, they'll say, like, I have nobody, not even a partner, not friends. And I'm not sure what you're doing with your life where you are making zero connections. But in my head, that's almost impossible unless something is seriously wrong. So then I would I would say go to therapy. I would say maybe check, see what's going on, because it's it's. Even if you're a very introverted person, like, are you on online forums? Are you playing video games? Are you on YouTube, like, community? Are you on discords? Like, it feels so impossible to be that without friends that a part of me is like, okay, what's really going on? Are you kind of maybe shooting for the stars in terms of friendships? Are you not making connections because you genuinely like this person? Are you having some sort of, like, attachment issue you have to go to therapy for? It just feels very improbable. Now, I think going back to this idea of friendship being or socialization being a must, 
I think socializing, i.e. making connections, building community is important, but not necessary in the way that it's been, I think, depicted in media, right? Oh, I really went on a monologue there. Okay. So when I think of, you know, we've talked about this before, sitcoms, TV shows, animes. Oh my God. You want to talk about friendship? Anime friendship. Now, even if you looked at friendship through anime, where like people will like reach the super saiyan level because their friends have been hurt. Yes, this happens. But if you look at the daily rituals around these anime characters, eventually as they grow and have families, they're not seeing each other every day. Like if you just take Goku and Krillin as an example, like Krillin gets um, killed by Frieza on, 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 um, oh my God, why is my brain like melting on Namek? Okay. <laughs> so Kr Frieza kills Krillin and Krillin like that uh, inspires Goku to basically reach Super Saiyan, right? And like, that's an, an amazing moment of friendship. Like, I think that's such, what's so beautiful about anime is that anime encourages friendship to be as intimate as like romantic relationships, if not sometimes more. So Krillin gets killed and Goku reacts and he becomes a Super Saiyan. And that instills a level of intimacy between friends that I think is what people are saying they want in friendships, right? And I don't think that's overrated. I think that's beautiful. But as Goku and Krillin grow older, you know, I think Goku's in his 50s in the series, right? Like he's older. We see the series get, um, we see the, the relationships and their friendships change. Like Krillin gets married to 18 and has a daughter. He becomes a cop. He's not seeing Goku every day. Goku's seeing Luis and Beerus and Vegeta every day because he's training. I mean, Goku's barely seeing his wife every day, though he does have an era of his life where he spends a lot of time with Chi-Chi, okay? So even as they get older, it's not like they're seeing each other every day, but there is you know, reunion times. Like that's, I think we forgot that, you know, we used to have reunions. That used to be the time you saw your friends or like the holidays, like Christmas and Thanksgiving. That's when you saw your friends. And if you were lucky and especially young, you saw them on the weekends after work, which, you know, COVID changed a lot for a lot of us. And it, you know, my life changed after COVID for sure. And then your friends get cool jobs and they move and people have babies and they do different things because they have to move schools for the children. And Life just goes in different directions as we age. So I think a part of the problem we're all having is we're not adapting to the new changes because it just feels like it's maybe going too fast versus somebody like me, because I was one of those people that moved. I moved so much in my 20s. I mean, I literally live in a different country now. So I'm not the friend that you can go to brunch with every weekend. I used to be in my early 20s, but heck, even that was costing too much, right? So I'm the friend that you have for a long time. Like my bestie and I have been friends for like, what, 26 years. And no matter where our jobs take us, where our lives take us, we're always communicating. We're always texting. We're always memeing. We're always messaging. Um, we're always making plans to hopefully see each other every one to two to three years. We're like always trying to, you know, make sure we put some, like we, we make sure we stay in contact, right? We're not always accessible. Our jobs are very demanding. We're at this time in our life where we're trying to figure out if we should buy a house. Like, what should we do with our lives? Like, we're very much in the the craziest time in our life. For the next 10 years, I think she and I will be in like the what am I doing for my retirement era, which is very hard because friends are at different stages. If you've got a friend who's already established, their job is taken care of. They've got a house. They want to have barbecues with you every weekend. They might be frustrated that you are in your hustle era. Or if you have a friend that's like in their early 20s and they don't have a lot of money and they just want to party and you can't party every night because you have to go to bed at 9, 8, 9 p.m., like they're going to get frustrated with you. So you have to really stick to your plan and understand what you're doing in your life and then find friends that really love you as the person you are like the person you are, not what you can do for, for them on the weekends, not the fact that you can come to game days, not the fact that you see them on Thanksgiving, but the person that you are. Because that's the point. Friendship isn't overrated. Your expectations of it is. Like your expectations of friendship is the problem because people think friendship, you know, just becomes intimate overnight, but it's about liking the person, the consciousness, a person you're going to love through political disagreements, a person you're going to love, even if they convert religions, a person you're going to love when they're having a hard time, a person you're going to love when they're depressed and can't come to your Christmas parties, a person you're going to love through all of it. This is the friendship everyone's looking for, but nobody understands. Like you have to actually like this person. And that is a, that's a huge thing. That's a huge thing to say, I really like this person. And I like them even when they piss me off. And that's the thing about friendship is the most intimate ones are rare. And when you find them, it's really lucky. 
And even those can be, can get complicated, right? So then if you're not finding those types of friends, like soulmate friends, then you're dealing with people that are good people, but they're kind of casual. Again, they're not your 2 AMs. And even if those friends who are not exactly the soulmate friends, they need you. It's not like you wouldn't be there for them. It just has to make sense within the dynamic, within the boundaries. So I really don't think true, genuine, intimate connection could ever be overrated. But I definitely think the expectations we have from people are. I definitely think whatever fantasy you have in your head about the expectation of friendship, I think it's wrong. So when people say like, oh, you're not a real friend, real friends do this. Real friends is not a thing. This is what a real friend does. That's a subjective definition of friend. So you better make sure you're all on the same page. You have to make sure you're on the same page. Now, some people will say like, real friends, you know, don't vote against your civil rights. And so you'll never have a friend that votes Trump, right? Like that's, that's a beautiful thing to have if you want to have friends that only align with your values. I think that's fine. A lot of people in my life are that way. I'm not that way. I have friends that don't align with my values and it does cause fights. It does cause problems. And yes, sometimes we don't talk to each other, but it doesn't change how I feel about that person right? It's why with certain people in my life, I have a rule of I'll never block you. I'll never stop talking to you. But if you need time away, I respect it. Like I have brothers I go in and out of talking with because when we come head to head with our disagreements, they don't want to talk. Of course they don't want to talk. We're having a huge moral disagreement. And most people don't want to feel bad about their moral status. But the dilemma is like, if you love the consciousness of the person, I think we're more than who we vote for. We're more than our actions. We're more than our thoughts. Like this is a philosophical belief. So for me, my inner circle are people I love regardless of how weird they become, right? But everybody else, I might end that friendship because it's time. Not that I don't love you as a person, but I don't, you're not my soulmate in that way. You're not somebody that I'm going to see through life and death, through sickness and in health. See, with my friends, I do think there are people I want to see through sickness and in health. And other friends, I want to wish them the best um, if it's too much, right? Because at certain times in our life, like I can't be a 2 a.m. call for every good person I've ever met in my life. And I know that must sound weird for people that are like, I've never been chosen by friends. Like this commenter said, I've never been chosen by friends. I'm not a friendship person. I don't know what that's about, right? Because I'm a person who has been chosen lots of times. I'm a person who has been, you know, desired from friendships and what an honor it is. But I also think that that's because, and hopefully we're all doing this, I'm a pretty good community member. And when you're a basically good community member, I feel like people reach out to you. But maybe that's because I've done so much community work in my life. I've built these friendships. I'm not sure what people are doing to, quote, not be chosen by friends. Like, I'm not exactly sure what that means. I'm not sure if people are maybe mistaking connections. You know, like I've done this in the past. Like, I, I think I've told you guys the story a thousand times. I, I, uh, I've met friends in different ways my whole life. And I remember one, well, a couple friends. I could tell that they didn't quite want to socialize with me. And I was like, hey, you know, it's no big deal that we're not friends. Like we could just end the friendship and I can move on. And they're like, oh my God, Brittany, you're so overthinking it. I absolutely want to be your friend. But then they ghost me and I never hear from them again. And I think there is something weird in society where we don't give people an opportunity to end friendships. But also I don't, I don't know what's happening in the world. Okay, I'll give you an example. I'm ranting, but let me give you an example. You know, those people that are like, oh my God, I like, created a birthday, a birthday party for my kid and no one showed up. I don't even know how that could ever happen. I don't even understand that lived experience because in my head as a parent, you get RSVPs. Parents have to bring their kids. Like the respectable parents bring their children to a party they've RSVP to. So are you making bad connections? Is your kid making bad connections? Like there are bad connections in the world. Are you only making the bad connections? And then I would say that needs therapy because how are you only making the bad connections? Like how are you even able to as an adult have a birthday party and people don't show up? Because like this is like what's very important for me is maybe it's the way that I plan. I would call these people and be like, hey, I'm having a party on Saturday. Are you coming or not? Because if not enough people are coming, I'm not doing this party and I need to know. And then if all those people said, yes, I'm coming, I understand this is a strain on your wallet. This is a strain on your time. I will be there. And then they don't show up. Those are the people you cut out. 
Okay, so these people, not reliable. Next. You, you know what I mean? You eliminate people from your life. Because at the end of the day, like, if you're that clear, you're that communicative, you're that blunt, hey, I want to have a party, I'll pay for it, but I just need to make sure everybody's coming. So please let me know if you're coming, because if you're not, or if you are, then, you know, blah, 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 blah. Then you can start cutting people out of your life. But I, I feel so confused. I wish I could talk to a person in this situation. Like, who is the person who is genuinely throwing parties and no one shows up? Because I see the TikToks, but a part of me thinks they're fake. Because how are you doing this? And then I have to think, okay, is neurodivergency playing a role? Is there some trauma playing a role? What is, what is the social expectation? What went wrong? What socially went wrong that... You know, oh, I invited a class of 30 people and no one showed up. How does that happen? It just feels so impossible to me. So I would like to know in the comment section down below if you guys have stories about this. But this is where I think so many things are at play that we don't have enough information for. So this idea of like, I've never been chosen by friends. No one's ever wanted to be your friend. You never made connections growing up. And I don't know if it's, you know, how people socialize, how they communicate. Do they have something about them that makes it hard to signal to other people that they're safe. Are you the problem? Like, is there the possibility that you genuinely actually are up and you don't even know it? Like, is that what's happening? Like, what is going on, right? I think that's why I like watching these reality TV shows because you can see how people are socializing. People who have never met, yes, people who are from similar areas, but people who are from different ethnic backgrounds, socializing, getting to know each other. You see how they're signaling to one another. Like if you watch Love is Blind, you see how they're signaling to each other through a wall. They can't even see each other and they're able to like make connect. They're able to fall in love. And you're telling me you can't make friends? Like, th what's going on? Like, what is going on? You know, there's something about either the tool we're using, the way we're socializing, something is going on. Or, and this is probably mostly the answer, we're not being honest with ourselves and we're denying ourselves a part of our own life and who we are. We're having a cognitive dissonance with our own self. So we're lying to ourselves so we have to lie to other people. And then we create a fulfilling cycle of like, I have no friends. I don't even know what this means. So. Again, if you are genuinely not socializing and you genuinely don't know what's going on, you have to go to therapy because that's the only thing I can think that's the problem is like there's some mental health issue happening. Or two, and I think this is kind of important, you're actually perfectly happy. You just keep listening to the bubbles and you need to like be, tell them to be quiet. You actually like being alone. You actually don't want friends in that way. You're actually pretty satisfied with your life, but you keep doubting yourself. Why are you doubting yourself? Right. So going back to this question, it's I would love to hear about how friendships are overrated. I've never been chosen by friends and I'm not a friendship person and consider my husband, my best friend. However, sometimes I feel bad because I feel it's not normal. Again, like that idea of normal, like who are you listening to? Who's talking to you? Who are you getting this feedback from? I understand you, you're getting it, but why are you even considering it, considering it if you're happy? Like if you're truly joyful with your choices, if you're so happy with your decisions, then what does it matter? Right? Like it doesn't matter. The world's telling me all the time not to be gay, to vote Trump. The world's telling me all the time that I should love America and move there again. That The world's telling me all the time lots of things. I don't need to listen to it just because it's giving me their opinion. So why are you listening to it? What about that advice from people is coming and ruining your joy? And then I would deconstruct that. Right? So again, our friendships overrated, <laughs> only our expectations of them. Okay, I would love to hear your comments in the sections down below. And I also would love to hear your suggestions for more TV shows I should review because I actually think I'm gonna start that. I actually think I am because I love everyone's reactions to Love is Blind, but I actually would love to hear my broader audience's opinion. So I'm gonna do some shows coming up. I'm excited to go through them. Leave your suggestions down below your suggestions for podcasts in the future. And thank you to this commenter who inspired a great little thought, uh, thought bubble here because I do, I love talking about friendships. But I do think because we're all having such unique experiences with the topic, we're coming from such different perspectives. It's hard for us to know exactly what's going on. Like I said, I genuinely do not understand the idea of never having friends because unless something is wrong, that's where therapy comes in. I don't understand the idea of throwing a party where no one shows up, like something went terribly wrong in communication. And three, I don't understand the idea of letting other people ruin your joy 
unless you yourself know you're actually not happy. And in that case, we should deconstruct that. Why aren't I happy? Am I happy? If I am happy, why do I care? But also make sure your husband is in your whole life because your husband too will die as we all will. And so we have to make sure we exist outside of our social circles. We have to make sure we understand our value outside of our friends and family, not because we don't need them, but because we exist outside of them, whether we like it or not. All right, guys, can't wait to see you next podcast. Thank you so much for being here and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool